gentlemen, ladies and gents that may be watching the show, today we have a jam-packed show for you. We're going to be talking about a 33-year-old who had his face reconstructed like his fan Justin Bieber. Also, can marriage destroy your chances of employment? We'll be discussing this also and we're going to delve into the wonderful world of rebuilding yourself. Can you actually do that? Well, according to Renato and Chris Cardoso from The Love School, you can. So you don't want to miss this one. Stay tuned. Sunday 4 p.m. You know what time it is. It's DKW time and I'm joined here today with my lovely co-presenters MJ and Sam. How are you ladies? Hi, very well. Hi. Thank you, Jay. I'm actually really <coughs> excited about today's show because we're going to be discussing rebuilding yourself and it's a bit yes. of a weird one. How do you rebuild yourself? Well, I mean, I, I, I'm looking at it like this. I'm on a process of rebuilding myself, right. you know. So we're going to learn a lot in this program. We've got a lot of surprises coming up. Mm. And uh, we also have a video. I went to, I've been going actually to the, to um, a rebuilding lessons from Chris and Renato that mm -hmm. they actually did the, the Love School event. Right. And I've actually been going weekly to their, to their meetings. So we'll, you'll hear a bit more about that later on. Yeah. It was very, very interesting, Jen. I'd like to hear about it too. I mean... MJ, what are your thoughts on rebuilding yourself? Can one actually rebuild themselves? So break themselves down again, pick themselves apart, and then reconstruct themselves to be the person that they want to be? Yeah, I think it's possible. Yeah, I think well, so. We're gonna but I'm sure that we will know more about it in the show, isn't yeah. it? I was just about <laughs> to say that. I'm really, really interested in this I, one. I'm going to find I out I for myself. I look at it like this. If we, I, if I, I know you very well, Jen. I know, I know M MJ very well. Mm -hmm. And if I think about all of us here, I think all of us have, have done that rebuilding program mm. without yeah. even knowing. Really? I think I think we always have to something to rebuild. I think yes. there is always something that you have to improve and that yeah. is rebuild, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Well, do you know what, viewers? I want to find out what your thoughts are. Can you rebuild yourself? And what does that mean to you? You can give us a call on our number, which is 0207 686 630. Zero, zero. Now, I want to go straight into the news piece because, as I mentioned on our intro, we've had a really bizarre <laughs> piece of news coming in. This 33-year-old, tell us, in MJ, what is going on? Well, first of all, I want to ask you mm. and Sam, if you have, had, have ever had, like, um, if you were ever a massive fan of a celebrity or an actor or something like that and if you have done like something drastic to oh, show you your you love and support <laughs> like change my face <laughs> no no no, no not that but maybe, maybe i don't know queue Cut up i think queue up. it's the haircut isn't it they even yeah. the hair. oh the way you dress or change the way you dress or queue up yeah. for days to watch I mean, a band, I don't know, something like that. A popular one. I'm, I'm going to confess. I can see you doing that, Jen. Well, I'm not that bad. I wouldn't <laughs> say, you, know, you know, there's the latest trend where <laughs> ladies were shaving, like, the sides of their hair, you know, like, there was the famous Rihanna cut and, like, what's her name? Uh, Miley. She sh went and shaved her head off, so quite mm. a few people went and shaved their heads off and stuff. But I'm not and if speaking that's about people, I'm speaking about you. Yeah, do you know what? You. I did when I was younger. Come on, Jill. When I was younger, out. I'll put it out. I, I would have posters. That's the most. You know, when you would have posters of your favorite band and celebrities, and you pin them up on the wall. But I wouldn't say I'd go as far as to queue up in a concert for like over overnight just to see my favorite celeb. Like, for example, Michael Jackson, you know, mm -hmm. back in his time when he was still alive, he would just peep out of his car and then the women were like, ah, 
a little past yeah. out and all that kind of stuff. I was never that bad. But I did kind of like obsess over certain boy bands when I was younger with the posters and just staring in front of the TV screen every time their music video would come on. So. You Sam, no? No, I, I can't Rock, think of anyone that I've been obsessed with in that, okay. in that kind of way. So, so I, I, well, that was, well, that was younger when I was immature and I didn't yeah. know better. I don't do that now. I I'm don't just happy that I'm the one reading the news and I don't have to answer the question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to read the peace news. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason that we are asking is, is because Daily Mail reported that a 33-year-old Toby Sheldon has spent five years and one hundred thousand dollars on what? plastic surgery to look like his hero Justin Bieber. Are you? And I'm sure. Serious? Yeah, yeah. But um, and if, do you yeah, know? yeah. So, oh, is, is so he had face fillers, oh chin God. reduction, and eyelid surgery, and he. Yeah. Uh, said so. This is supposed to be him now looking like Justin. He doesn't Bieber. look anything yeah, yeah, like him. No, 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 no. Like so he said, uh, by oh, using that. Justin charming baby face as my inspiration, I have been able to restructure my entire look to maintain a much more youthful appearance through plastic surgery. So this was him before. Okay. Yeah. And and the, and, and the other oh one. Oh my gosh, he looks so much better before. Well, before he actually <laughs> looks more like Justin Bieber before everything. <laughs> I think he looks. So, <laughs> but this is the thing. I remember. I, uh, but uh, let me just finish okay. because one of the things he said as well is um, he wants <coughs> to look younger. So I actually think that it's not just the fact that he wants to look like Justin Bieber. I think. There might be other issues. Yeah. yeah. The fact that he wants to look younger. So, what you ladies think? Do you think it's just the thing of being <coughs> like my hero, or there are deeper issues? Uh, there are definitely deeper issues, and I remember I spoke about this before on uh, on the show. There's nothing wrong. In, this is my opinion, by the way. I'm not speaking on behalf of DKW. This is me. I think there's nothing wrong on, on improving on oneself. Mm -hmm. But the day when you say you have to look like so and so, I want to break down my physical structure the way that I am, the way I, I am to made look like to look like someone else. else. I think that you must have some sort of psychological issue yeah. because I don't I do, understand I do agree with why you, you want to look like. It's like me saying, Sam. I'm in love with the way you look. I'm in love. With, I'm now going to have plastic surgery so I can have the same lips as you, the same nose yeah. as you. The same, it, when you think about it, psychologically, something must have gone wrong for you to wake up in the morning. And not look, love yourself. And, yeah, not even love not yourself. Not have the confidence want, within yourself. Want to look. I can understand if you say, do you know what? You know, I need to fix my hair. I need to lose weight. I need to change my dress sense. That is one thing. But it's still not changing you, your look as, you know, who you are. But... For you to say, I want to look like so-and-so, I just think it's utter madness. Well, I, I mean, I would really, really love to hear from the viewers with this one, because I think this is quite an interesting mm. topic. And I think if you can email us on comments at dkw.me or even call in on 0207 686 6300. I would love to hear what our viewers have yeah. to say next. I, th I think what... I mean, it sounds very bizarre to me, and I just think that a person must have issues mm. if you if you need to go to that extreme and you're not confident, confident. within yourself. I mean, I can understand if someone has, you know, they have a clip lip, lip or something, and for some reason mm. or health issues, why they have to have some kind of surgery. But to to look like somebody else, I think no, you, you, something's not wrong there. I, I something's think not right. Is, I, I agree with you, ladies. I think there are deeper issues uh, on a situation like mm -hmm. this. It's like you don't actually like your you. You, you yeah. don't like you. Yeah. You don't like who you are. Yeah. You don't like who you represent. Yeah. So it, it is very bizarre, and mm -hmm. I actually think there should be laws implemented so that. Things like this doesn't happen because actually it doesn't even look like Justin Bieber. <coughs> this is the thing, and th that's the thing. You will never look like that. Yeah. It's just, it's in my personal opinion, it's physically impossible to look a hundred percent like someone else because you were not designed like that person. Yeah. I mean, even identical twins have some small Seals, yeah. yeah changes, even though they're you know identical twins. So. It, for me, if you're on, if you're enhancing your beauty, that's one thing. But to say you want to have someone else's beauty, that's 
I don't know. I just find yeah, it because you're not you're not satisfied with yourself, are yeah. you? Mm. There's something deeply empty about you inside. So it it, it it simply means that the person is not is is not fulfilled. Yeah. So something is missing. Mm -hmm. They lack they're lacking something. Maybe happiness maybe love, maybe could be traumas that they may have had from maybe from a young child. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look at it on a deeper, on a, there has to be something very much deeper or some trauma think, or something. I think it has everything to do with the show today, isn't it? It's yeah. the fact that maybe there are things in you that you don't like and you want to rebuild yourself. Yeah. But then you have to rebuild yourself with what you with, have within out is exactly rather with than what out in exactly exactly <laughs> <laughs> well i've got this next news piece ladies Oops, well you're both in employment and you're both married i'm the only single one on the show today so i want to ask you this question do you think that being married can spoil your chances of gaining employment oh no i can't agree with that i am married and i i don't think that's affected my um my way of uh, infected me in getting employed. Why? I, I can't I understand you know, that. I, I disagree. I think I disagree. it's possible in, the de in our society today to go for jobs where that plays a role and maybe... They won't let you on because you're married. Yeah, because you're married, maybe they will think that you will soon start a family or, um, you know, many, maybe you will not... 100% they think that you will not 100% commit to the job mm -hmm. so yeah I think it's possible well, in, in our society <laughs> well according to this study um, which was taken from the Daily Mail once again it says did you know that one in three women married or engaged so you've got your wedding bang or your engagement ring fear that it will damage their employment prospects so a study showed that engaged or um, sorry engagement or wedding rings that are on show to employers will make them lose their prospects of getting that job. So they would prefer wow. not to have the ring on. They will actually take their wedding band or their engagement ring off so that they will get their job. A fifth removed their ring in order to avoid their age from being assumed by employers, which I find bizarre. And like you said, many of them feared that they would not get the job because their employees would think that they're going to start a family. I'm quite, I'm, um, do you know what? I'm, I'm very worried about people who will go to this extreme to compromise them, their, their values. You, I, I wanted to talk about values and principles, but you've brought it, you've, you've actually mentioned this for me to bring it up a little bit more earlier. And I, that was one of the studies I learned on, um, one of the studies I actually did at the love, the love um, building step, and it was about principles and values, Jen. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I'm, when you're saying that, I'm thinking, my God, a person would compromise themselves, compromise by removing your married ring, you know, getting divorced or whatever for the sake of a job. Mm -hmm. You would deny your principles and your values just to gain something else. I'm worried about but people who do things I, I like think, this. I, I, I think, I don't think it's even. I think when people do that, it's not even, um, they're trying to hide it because they fear that because they are trying, they are, they are like married or they are 35 or they are 36, they are not going to give them the opportunity mm -hmm. to have that job or to excel in a certain position in their workplace. Yeah. I think it's a fear that the person has, um, you know, of not growing, of not achieving, Phoenix, and, and lose your own dignity and yeah. self self respect but for yourself know, in the yeah. process. But one of I don't think it's right. No, it's not right. it's not and right, and it's not and it's not right for I mean, companies actually to because we are speaking about the person, but we have to think as well of those that are making the decisions, and it's not right on them mm. to make decisions on someone just because they are married or they are thirty five or they are thirty six, and they would prefer to employ a twenty year old. Yeah. It's not right. But I, I think even if you look at statistics, the statistics doesn't show that, okay, there are more people that are, who are single that are more employed than people who are married. I don't believe that. Yeah, well, th this, is, this is according to the study. Um, the main fear for mm -hmm. many of these women was 
as soon as they see the wedding band or the engagement ring, they're going to assume I want to start a family. So two years down the line, I'm going to fall pregnant and yeah. then I'm going to be off on maternity leave for a year and you're going to be paying me and you won't have no one to fill that position. Do you think that employers would actually feel that way with many people that had... Like, say if you're I a don't. manager. You're a manager, um, you know, you, you're, inter you're interviewing someone and they do have their engagement ring on, you happen to notice it, and part of the um, recruitment mm -hmm. process is you were asking that question, do you plan to start a family, or you're gonna get engaged, how many kids do you want? This person says they want a whole football team. What would you think? What would you it, say? It, do you know, I am a manager, and, and looking at that, I, I mean, I've, I've gone through a process where I've gone through interviewing um, people for particular roles. Mm. And it's something that I would never look at, oh, I'm going to employ this person more because they're single. I think they're, they're going to be more available for this role than someone who's married. I'm go what I am going to be looking at, I'm going to be looking at their skills. I'm going to be looking at mm -hmm. their, their past experience, their qualification. I'm going to be looking at, you know, what kind of, um, what I can say, testimony or history. What does that person have? Because yes, you, I may look and see a single person. Does that mean that that married person or oh, that single person has a better history than that married person? Or, or, or I'm going to be able to keep that um, single, single person, person for oh. five years and I'm not going to be able to keep that married one for five years. It, it doesn't make any sense, Jen, because you cannot, you cannot define someone for that role under that kind of um, criteria criteria yeah. but this so I totally don't agree with it yeah this this Sam um, it's you mm -hmm. and the company you work for yeah they abide by that but there are companies that, there that probably that don't. they don't do that mm -hmm. well, they will uh, think of a person that um, is younger that they can work with that they can um, Mold? mold according to what they want and they would prefer an, some... I, 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 I'm not I, I, saying it's not. It's wrong. I'm not saying it's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there is companies you know, like that, but I, I do, think, I do feel I think that there's exists. still two sides well, of the coin. Well, let's yeah. throw it out there it. and audience, let us know what, <laughs> what do you think. Do you think that some employers are biased and would rather employ um, a single person to work for them than a married person in case of them going off for a family, let's say. You can give us a call on 0207 686 6300 and give us your opinion. Do you have good morals and principles, as Sam was saying, and we'll talk about later on in the show. Mm -hmm. And also, we'll have another guest presenter, Kim, coming on the show to share her views on rebuilding yourself. Stay tuned. Hello, welcome to DKW. On today's show, we're talking about rebuilding yourself. Can you rebuild yourself into the person that you would always like to be or want to be? Well, that's what we're going to find out on today's show. So I've got the lovely Kim joining us here. Hi. Kim, how are you? I'm so happy to be here. Lovely. I love your dress. <laughs> Thank you. Do you know what, Kim? I asked the ladies earlier, mm -hmm. can a person rebuild themselves and what is rebuilding to you? I think it's intelligent to always see how you can improve yourself. Mm -hmm. I think any, any person who thinks they've got nothing to learn and they can't learn from anyone is a person that's never going to be fulfilled in life. Mm -hmm. Because I think rebuilding ourselves and changing ourselves is something we do as we get older. Mm -hmm. Because the pe person we are when we were, like, let's say, a teenager to how we are now is, different, is a different person. Yeah. So if I am at the age I am and I'm still thinking as if I was in my teens, mm -hmm. something's going to be wrong. I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to, it's gonna, I'm probably going to pay a price for that. Yeah, it's true. And I, I love that. It's kind of like reinventing yourself mm. as the years go by. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to throw a really cheeky question, ladies. Is there a particular area of your life whereby you would look at it and say, do you know what, I'd love to rebuild that particular area? Or a part of your life where you've looked back and you thought, hmm, perhaps I would have gone about things differently and rebuilt that situation differently. Who wants to go first? <laughs> I, I think probably um, what I would have, I mean, I, I look at it like this. I am, uh, like, like I said last week's show, I'm a work in pro progress. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe that I am continually rebuilding myself. Why I say that is because with my life, and I'm sure with you girls as well, we're always experiencing different, different scenarios, different things that we go through with our families, with our work, you know, disappointments, different things that we may 
become problems that we have to rebuild from. Mm. So I find that I, I'm, I'm using, I'm, I've learned now to use these things, you know, these experience to, to um, change the, the way I think. And I love what Kim said because we do change. For, I, I'm a lot, I'm a completely different person mm. than I was mm. 20 years ago. Mm. And my mindset is completely different. Mm. Where 20 years ago, I would have probably taken things a lot more literally. Mm. And I would have probably, you know, freaked out at certain experience that I went through. Mm. Certain experience would have really put me down and I found it a lot harder to bounce back with certain situations. But I find that now in my mature state of mind, mm. because of my past experience, because of my maturity, I'm able to deal with um, scenarios in my life a lot different. Mm. So I use those scenarios as part of my building and I'm learning this more and more. Yeah. Mm. I agree, I think um, if I could change things in my past, would I change them? Absolutely. But then again, was those problems, those mistakes, those situations mm. that made who I am today. I yes, agree. exactly. Yeah. So, were they bad? Yes, they were bad, they were mm. painful, they were stupid, they were silly, mm -hmm. but hey, I am here today, yeah. so yeah. I've learned. Yeah. I, I can help other people mm -hmm. uh, because of those situations. Mm -hmm. So, do I regret them? No, I don't think so because yeah. they made who I am today. Yeah. And, and guess what? You can you can actually rebuild because if we use like education mm -hmm. for one thing, you know, I, I I did leave school with my GCSEs and you know O levels and things that we used to have in those days but I can think of areas in my particular life where I didn't go into education I was just wasting time having fun doing modeling and doing all sorts of things where I wasted a lot of time so when I look back if you ask me you know I mean one of the things I would have loved to have done probably like rebuild is was. to rebuild the educational side of me mm -hmm. do you know what I mean because I think education you can learn so much from education yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's almost like exercising the brain yeah. in, in somewhat. Yeah. You know, I think that is something that I would have probably worked more on yeah. in Kim, the past. Is there anything you say that you would have loved to have rebuilt? Um, when I think about things that I would have liked to have done differently, mm. I do have some, some things that, when I say regrets, yeah, a little bit. Not regrets, but rebuilt. Rebuilt. I think, for me, when I was younger, I wish I was a bit more wiser with my finance. Right. That was yeah. one. That's, <laughs> a, that's, that's no, it's a really yeah. good yeah, it's one. A very yeah. good, because yeah. not, because it, it impacts on my life even today. Yeah. Right, yeah. You know, the things that when I was younger and credit was more available, I did squander, 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 squander. I and, I, mm. and I did do a lot of that. And some of those things I do regret because it was just really ridiculous because some of the some, some some of the money that I wasted I've got nothing to show for it. But at the same time I did make some good investments because when I was younger, I, when I was in my twenties, I bought my first property. Wow. So that has impacted on yeah. my life today okay. because because of the property I bought when I was younger, it's enabled me to buy a house today. Wow. So yes, I do regret the, the squandering, but I regret some of the investments I did make. But do I regret my life? No, because no. it's my life, and yeah. you know, there's yeah, some things. Yeah, you probably kissed a couple of frogs, but <laughs> I think that's all character building, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you made you then choose a better prince. That's after. right. <laughs> you made you choose the prince, weren't you? Yeah. Most definitely. I mean, Sam, you're taught. You've spoken a lot about the rebuilding um, yourself course, the seven steps of rebuilding yourself yes. and stuff. You went there and I believe RDKW cameras followed you along for a special yes, interview. Yes, they, with they Chris did and, and it, it was actually a wonderful um, experience because I was lucky enough to get an exclusive interview with our lovely Chris and Renato who actually did the Love School event and they, they in actual fact, I brought this along with me because this is something that I've been using um, in the weeks it's like a, um, a rebuilding yourself seven steps to become a better person mm -hmm. and i kind of was uh, and, and each week i've been going i've been having a different a different scenario to build yourself but what i learned a lot from this couple and i and i and i'm and I'm, i thought you know chris especially chris she's she's a remarkable woman and it was just the fact that she was using um her problems and life experience because she's actually been through so much in her marriage so much in her life experience things from a child 
childhood that had a big effect on her as an adult. Mm -hmm. And um, she, in, in, rather than using them to be defeated, and mm -hmm. as, as, as many people do, you know, they allow traumas and all kinds of scenarios that they experience to put themselves down. She's turned it around mm -hmm. and she started to use these um, scenarios to actually um, make herself a better person and to build on them so she and to them build as, her character. As stepping mm -hmm. stones, basically. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you know what? You've got me really interested now. Let's take a look at this video clip of your time with Renato and Chris. I want to grab this opportunity to speak with you, with both of you and I'm going to direct my first question to our lovely Chris because because we DKW we are a women's program and we admire the fact that you know you have used your problems to basically to use to build yourself and, and this is remarkable so I just want to hear from you um, a few words about that yes well every woman has problems everybody has problems and insecurities as well but we need to uh, let them go with the faith you know if you keep them as if okay everybody has them I might as well just hold on to them you keep having the same problems all your life mm -hmm. so what I did was I decided to be free and that's what I think your viewers w need to do you need to be free. Just get yourself free from all these insecurities, from all the fears that you're never going to find somebody, that you're never going to, that your marriage is not, is not going to work, the fear that your children are, are not going to be there for you. All these fears just keep you, making you do things, mistakes, uh, keep you uh, away from, from the solutions that are out there. So when you are free to just okay I'm gonna believe I'm gonna be positive I'm going to, to do what I can I'm gonna do the right thing then you know everything starts working out because you're not you're not um, tied up by by these things that usually people hold on to um, my question is because I know a lot of the viewers may be thinking well you know she's absolutely beautiful you know she comes from a very good background you know she's a lucky she's lucky um, and you know I'm, I'm, I'm she hasn't been maybe raped or abuse been for abuse and things like that so the question is do you think anyone can rebuild themselves reinvent themselves I think, think Yes, of course. In fact, I think the worst your life was the better because you have more, more of a background to, to turn around. You know, I've had my, my share of problems. I wasn't lucky all the time. I mean, I am lucky now because I've overcame my, my problems. And I think when you, when you overpass, when you are uh, overcome your problems, that's when you're lucky. It's not by what things happen in your life, you know, where you come from, that, that doesn't help because even with the best background, I had so many problems. I went through so many things in my life. So it doesn't really matter. What matters is what you're going to do about it, you know, what you're going to do about it. If you say, you know what, I'm going to be a different person. I'm going to be a happy person. I'm going to have a successful life. Then you can have it. It's really up to you. And you didn't allow them to defeat you. I mean, I'm going to take this to Renata now. Hi. Um, I mean, how long do you think this process really takes for someone who may be coming from a trauma or, you know, they may be, have the world of problems? I mean, how long does it really take? Is it long? It's not magic. It doesn't happen in a snap of finger. Um, how long it takes, it depends on how determined the person is to change. It's really down to their determination, how fed up they are with the life that they have. Because a person has always a choice to continue spending their time the way they've always done or choose to spend their time in a different way. Time will pass one way or another, but I can decide how we'll spend that time. If I spend that time sitting at home and crying about my life, or be, uh, uh, instead of doing that, I will get up and do something different that will actually take me forward, get me ahead in life. 
So it's the person who decides how quick or how long it's going to take for them to change. It's down to their determination. That is amazing. I mean, this bullet bulletproof book that you've made, I mean, I'm reading it myself, but I, I can see that it is a great success and I can see the queue of people that are here today. I mean, are you thinking of doing another book? Is there going to be a part two? <laughs> <laughs> we, we're already working on another book and that's in response to what we are seeing in, in people who we interact with, people who write to us and and talk to us and we meet in these events and the desire is not just to write books the desire is to address people's needs a book is just a medium through which we are getting a message across to people so we believe there is a message to be said there are ears that need to hear it and as long as it's it's like that we'll be writing books that's absolutely amazing. I mean, I think that's all we're going to have for you today because we, could, we, we don't want to keep this queue any longer. But I just want to say from DKW, thank you very much for speaking with us today. And we wish you all the best in the future. And I'm going to be in all your meetings. I won't be missing any of them. I can tell you, I'm really excited. I this, was uh, very, very <laughs> excited. You. you know, it was quite an honor, really, to meet the two couple who who really are investing in their in their marriage, in their life, in their skills, and they're actually using it to, to help other people. And I, th I think it's absolutely amazing because I myself, I've learned so much from, from going to these. Because what I've found with both of them, they've, they both have learned to value themselves. Mm. And I think one of the things I've learned from them, how can you help somebody else? Like for example, you have a partner and you want to help that, that person or you want to um, sacrifice for that person if you're not going to do it for yourself, if you're yeah. not going to value yourself. It's one of the things I, I learned in the, in the steps that I went to, the last one that I went to, and it was about valuing you, having principles. And I remember learning um, about a woman who... She, she, she was so, her self-esteem was so low and I'm, I'm assuming that her, her partner was quite a bully because he said something like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to urine in a cup or a shoe or something and, and you have to prove your love to me, you're going to prove your love to me by drinking it. And this woman went ahead and did this. Now, a lot, you know, how bizarre, how crazy for someone not to value themselves to that extreme, mm -hmm. that, that you think that you need to do something so low to please another person. Mm -hmm. And that's what I respect about, about Chris. Although she had so many problems in her marriage, instead of using them to always try to, you know, please that person, please that person, please that person, she, she brought the problems back to herself. Mm -hmm. And she thought, you know what? Let me rebuild me. And this is the thing. I mean, obviously, you learn so much from them and all their experiences and so on. Uh, bringing it back to us and the audience, I think rebuilding really starts about, you know, when which, what she said, oh, I'm getting tongue twisted here. What she said about taking the problems and actually working on it to make yes. it a success for you. And like we were discussing before, maybe there's different things in your life that perhaps would have changed if you had gone back and done things mm. differently however it's helped you to be a better person mm. it's defined the choices that you now make in life mm -hmm. and i think that these situations can then be a stepping stone i mean yes. the greater the problem yes. the greater the accomplishment mm -hmm. when you mm -hmm. overcome it so then you feel kind of invincible mm -hmm. becomes becomes kind of like an addiction you get addicted to solving your own problem it, it's it's like one of those things where you don't get you know a problem comes in you're just going to give up yeah. You're just going to take on the failure mode. Mm. You know, you know you're not going to take on the failure mode. You're going to take that situation, you're going to change it around, and you're going to constantly work until, until you succeed. But can anyone change? This is the thing. That was the question yeah. I asked her. <laughs> I think anyone can change. I, what I did, I mean, because I've been to these steps, but how they did it, they broke it down. They broke it down into different stages by finding the root of the mm -hmm. problem mm -hmm. and then from dealing with the root and then working your way up. So I think with people who do have problems, they need to find out where do your insecurities, where do your addictions, where did it all start? And I think once people can work out where it all started, 
they're in a position to move forward. Mm. Like Renata said, that it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen quickly. But once you start to understand and deal with it, you come and say, I'm going to deal with this problem. You're, you're, you're on the road to success. Yeah. Insecurities is another big thing I guess many people struggle with, especially us women. Mm. If it's not our hair, it's the way we look. If it's not the way we look, it's our marriages. If it's not our marriages, it's not our kids. I mean, insecurities, can one rebuild themselves and get themselves out of that insecurity that they're going through? I think insecurity can trap you into a situation. If, if, if you are into a situation and uh, you are an insecure person, it, it's harder for you to get out of it because of the insecurity because probably your insecurity makes you feel that um, you are not worth it, that you cannot do it, that you are not like the other one that was able to. So like um, King said, I think it's important for you to get to the roots of that insecurity and that problem. And I think one thing that is important as well is when you realize where the problem started or you know, what caused that insecurity for you to deal with it, not yeah. just realize and not do anything or about it. it you know, and it, it just, didn't happen. Mm. Just deal with it and do something about it. Yeah. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm just thinking about the length of time that we, we were saying on the video, how long it takes. And it's very clear that it depends on the person yeah. um, how long it's going to take. It depends on you. It depends on how much you're going to invest in making that change. And it, I mean, it can be one month, two, maybe one year, two years, but it doesn't matter. The fact is, is that you're not gonna give up. You're gonna keep working on whatever it takes and however long it takes, you know what I mean? You're gonna get a positive note. You're gonna learn along the way because you're looking at the scenario in a, in a, in a positive way. So yes, somebody who is traumatized or somebody who has been a victim, they can change that self-pity into something positive rather than have been that victim no longer to be that victim but to be that person who's going to conquer that's it and it'd be an even greater person and that's why we're going to go to a quick break and after the break we're going to be giving you some real life stories of how people turn their lives around how they were able to rebuild themselves into even better people from traumas so stay tuned <laughs> Welcome back. We're talking about rebuilding ourselves. And quite rightly, there's so many things that perhaps we would like to go back and change and rebuild. And if you want more information on organisations that can help you, please feel free to go to our website, which is www.dkw.me. Now, going back into rebuilding ourselves, I wanted to know from you ladies, do you think that Okay, if a person's particularly stuck and they don't know how to come out of the situation, what is it that they can do? Well, mm. before we go into that, mm. um, Jennifer, um, I know, I'm, I'm sure the, the viewers know the story of this lady, mm. uh, Katie Piper. Um, so her story was she was thrown acid into her face and part of her body. And she was a very pretty lady, but you know, after the acid being thrown at her face, oh, she gosh. had a burnt face and everything mm -hmm. and it was um, very hard for her at the time mm -hmm. and in one of the interviews she did at the time uh, she said that she felt like, like not living anymore and give up on life and everything as you can see in the pictures there. Uh, but she was able to rebuild herself, you know, not just physically wow. but as well inside of her Amazing. because today she's a speaker today she's an author today she inspires other people mm. other women so this is a way where you can rebuild yourself i think this is a way like uh, what renato and christian were saying isn't it mm. to go into the problem see the problem there but don't let the problem take you down That's you it. actually bring the problem up and you use the problem to become a better person and actually to help other people yeah, because as well. she's an author yeah. isn't she she's yeah. been yeah. Like, in books and everything so i actually can saw you imagine her how many in, people? on a tv program a few weeks really? back when she was helping with uh, fashion things and yeah. you know she's doing so very well for herself yeah, she's doing very well for and herself a beautiful story we've also got a caller angela on the line who wants oh, wow. to talk about what, what she's heard on the show today and a news piece angela are you there 
Oh, yeah, I'm here. Hi there, Angela. What do you want to say today on the show? No, I just want to comment about what um, Sam said about, um, you know, hiring someone that has skills and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, but from my point of view, I work in the NHS. Sorry mm. to say NHS. But the thing is, the reality is most managers will never hire someone that has more, most experience in them. Really? They do hire someone that has less experience in them. Right. So that they can control them, they can mold them, they can actually do whatever they want to do. Hmm. Because if someone has experience, they'll probably, you know, try and contradict every time, I mean, whatever they're doing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or challenge that, them that's even. True. Yeah. You know. Angela, I was, that's, a, that's a good point. Yeah. Angela, on that point, I want to ask you a quick question. Do you think then that stops people from rebuilding themselves, perhaps in their career? Maybe that forms an insecurity yeah. in them and they yeah, don't push the themselves moment, to go... I mean, it's a big issue in the NHS. I know it's been in the news where they've been talking about nurses, but most of our nurses are leaving because, you know, you don't get that support. Once you start challenging your manager... I mean, you're not. I mean, you're not rebuilding yourself, to be honest. Because when you find yourself a new job, you you're kind of trying to rebuild yourself, or probably move move up, you know, to a, a, a certain scale, you know, instead of just staying the same person. But if you find all those um, paddles, it's really hard for you. You know, a manager that's not supporting you, a manager that doesn't want you to see you going forward. I mean, it's quite hard. You. It would be hard for you to rebuild yourself. Yeah. So hard. I definitely agree. Go ahead. Can, can I just say something? I, I do understand what you're saying there. But with situations like that, you have to learn to work with the system. Now, for example, if you work with a manager who is much more in, um, intelligent than yourself, mm. or, mm -hmm. or no, you're more intelligent than your manager, you have to be able to deliver yourself in a way that you're going to add to the manager because no manager wants to be undermined mm. yeah of course. That's not. so you have to really, you have I don't to think undermining them i'm mm -hmm. just talking from one experience mm -hmm. i think it's just that you know we, there was there's a manager that i know for sure we rather hire those that have quite newly qualified rather mm -hmm. than hiring those that have experience mm -hmm. even though you know he will struggle with them yeah but he he, he, he wants to have control, you understand what I mean? So yeah. He wants to control them, he wants mm -hmm. to tell them what, what to do, rather yes. than, you know, it's yeah. not about challenging your manager or mm -hmm. undermining them. Mm -hmm. It's about contributing, it's about yeah. the manager listening to you yeah. as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would just, like Sam said, I will hire someone that even has mm -hmm. better skills than, than, than I have. Mm -hmm. So I can learn from them. Yeah. You know, who said you are pre perfect because you're a manager? Yeah. yeah. That you sounds know, like the manager. You're working somewhere else, yeah. and then you know you you, you come. You, I mean, I, I I was working. Let's say I was working in a different company. Mm -hmm. So I probably was doing more than what you're offering me to do in your mm -hmm. company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. You know? Definitely. So, <laughs> Sorry, Angela, but no, I totally understand where you, you're coming from. Thank you very much for your Thank call. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. But, lady, that's, that's a very good point because mm -hmm. then, like Angela was saying, if you have a boss like that, it will, it will bring fear about you in, in rebuilding Do you yourself. you know something? I'm a manager myself, mm -hmm. and a manager like that, that's to do with their own insecurities. I personally want to have people working with me who can add. I want people who are going to be clever, dynamic, add to what I'm doing because let's face facts it'll make my life easier mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. a manager who wants to just have people that you can just rule and control mm -hmm. that person isn't going to be progressive for that business managers do tend to be older people because they've probably been in the More job experience. longer yeah. and but a clever manager will get people who are not like themselves, they're going to get people different to themselves. People can skills, add yeah, have better skills, skills yeah. more dynamic, more, and you're going to rein in all that energy to yeah. make the business just excel. So I think for that young lady, she's just been unfortunate to come across the wrong kind of manager, but a good manager wouldn't do that. It says in the word, isn't it, manager? Mm. Yes. Yeah. to manage all the skills together. Yeah. You know, so, so getting that. That into, into the topic, what other difficulties do people actually face in rebuilding themselves? So, for example, mm -hmm. in Angela's case, the employees had fear. Do you think mm -hmm. there's other difficulties that stop people from rebuilding themselves? Yes. I, I think, mm. particularly with this situation with 
I like Angela's scenario with the manager and the manager wanting to have people who were who can't add. So sometimes the manager themselves is afraid to rebuild themselves. Mm. Probably a, a bit yeah. of old school, yeah. used <laughs> to doing things a certain yeah. way, especially probably particularly in the NHS probably used to doing things a certain way and is, and is afraid yeah. of, it's of, of all the you are in your comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, instead of they yeah. in, grab it, you know, update your IT skills, go for the... You were talking about education, weren't yes. you, sir? Yeah, yeah, go yeah. for it, you know? Yeah. And then that way you won't have to be just thinking, oh, let me just find people who I can just boss about and it's not <laughs> going to know better than me. You can really take your department, your company straight to another level. Mm. Well, I think um, why, another scenario why people do find it hard to actually, um, w they find it difficult to know where to start, Jen. Mm. Yeah. And I think that's what people find really difficult. Yeah. You know, where do I start? What do I do? You know, am I able to, do I have the ability? You know, and I think that is one of the things that um, allows people to continue in the same way. Yeah. So it goes back to that. I'm in my comfort zone. Yeah. Let me not bother start because I don't know where to start. So I might as well stay where I am yeah. and and not you know progress. Yeah. And I think that that can be. I think people's mindset is what needs to change. And saying that, when you said that, you reminded me of what you even said earlier, which is going to the root. If they don't know where to start, yeah. try and trace it back to the root of where things start. Yeah. Or, you know, started to begin to go wrong, or mm -hmm. where you feel or think it started to go wrong and because, then work from there. And because when, mm -hmm. sorry, <laughs> sorry. You know, and I don't think it's, um, it's disgraceful or you should be ashamed yeah. if you don't know where to start to go and mm. ask for help. Mm. Yes, there's go nothing wrong with that. Someone that has done it or, you know, go somewhere where you can find the help you need so that, you know, you can start the process of rebuilding mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah. I, I, like, I like the fact even with the steps where you can actually look into your this is a good way to start actually look into yourself and even if you have like you know like to write it down the things that you see is like a negative within yourself the things that you find that you find difficult to to um about yourself and i think because if you can look into yourself and look into what your weaknesses are mm -hmm. then you can take those weaknesses to kind of say okay this is what i need to change Work on, yeah. and take it step by step i love yeah. that it, it's so true and you know on, to conclude on that note i would like to also say that sometimes things are going to happen in life that you just have no control true. over yeah. Very there's going to be scenarios where you can be the best person in the world you're, you're 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 going places you're sailing along in a particular area of your life and then all of a sudden there's a milestone right in front of you mm. and you don't know what to do and i think in those kind of situations, when it comes, instead of looking at it as a milestone, look at it as a stepping stone yes. to something even better. Stay positive and look at it as an opportunity to rebuild yourself into an even better person yeah. than before. I don't know if you agree with that. I maybe. agree yes. because, look, nothing is set in stone. Yeah. There's nothing that you cannot there's some people they think I've been like this for so long it can't change that's not true yeah. you know it, like what you're saying Jen it can change it's just for you to take those positive steps to, to, to make your mark and make it change that's it and you know what if you want more help or you want more information or you want to talk about your changes or need help changing please feel free to send your comments or your um testimonies even to comments at dkw.me i've also been told by our producers there's someone that's watching the show and wants us to give a shout out sonia thank you for watching the show she <laughs> says she's enjoying it right now mm -hmm. and we hope that you enjoyed it too ladies we've come to the end of our wow, program i've really enjoyed the show it was a brilliant a show topic. and i hope you're going to enjoy rebuilding yourself so stay tuned for another show of dkw next sunday at 4 p.m we look forward to seeing you again take care Bye. Bye.